Hello. Today you join us in the English countryside on a foggy morning. And look, there's a swan without a head. Oh, no, it's fine. It's okay, don't worry. But we're not here to talk about this sort of fog. We're talking about the fog that can appear in your taillights. I'm John from Tesla Gurus. We've been investigating this problem. It's quite common on the Tesla Model 3, but it's not only a Tesla problem. Other car manufacturers have experienced headlights and taillights misting up, and I wanted to get to the bottom of why it happens and see if there was an easy fix, rather than just ringing up the Tesla Ranger, getting him to come round and install a new light unit. So let's talk about why it happens. Back in the good old days, and this is my first car, yes, it's a Mark III Cortina, in case you don't know. In those days, the lights were all powered using 12 volt filament bulbs, and they generate quite a bit of heat. And if there's any moisture within the light cluster or the headlamp unit, the heat from the bulb will generally keep it clear. Modern cars use LED lamps, which only generate heat at the rear of the unit where the electronics are housed. So that's causing cold spots at the front of the lens. Uh, any moisture within the lamp housing is going to condense within there and it's going to form fog or even droplets of water on the inside of the lens. But why is it that some of these light units fog up and others remain clear? There must be more to it than that. So the first thing we're going to do is take one of these out of the Model 3 and look at it in much greater detail. And you'll need a few simple tools for this, a small screwdriver, an 8mm socket on a ratchet, a plastic prying tool and a little clip removal tool um, that you should better find online if you haven't got one. Now we're, we're taking out the uh, light from the Model 3 boot lid in this case. The one that's uh, the other tail light is not that much more difficult to get to. Um, but on our car, this is the one that was that was badly misted up. Now you do need to pull this trim quite firmly to get the clips out, but uh, don't worry about breaking it. There's a connector inside that you'll see with a little uh, tab that you just need to push down and then press the tab in and give the connector a good tug. Now you'll see that this connector is actually a waterproof connector. It's got the that orange gasket there, so water doesn't tend to get in via that connector. So now take your 8mm socket on the ratchet and just find that nut, loosen it off and uh, then just do the last few turns with your fingers is probably easiest. So there's only one bolt, one nut holding that light unit in uh, but there are a couple of locating clips um, and you need to just get in between the, the light unit itself and the boot just to uh, ease that sort of tension off and get the whole unit free from uh, where it's housed. Once you've done that, lift it clear, and there we go. So now we've got it inside, we can take a, a closer look at what's going on. Um, there's quite a bit of condensation in this one, but not an awful lot of water pooling in the bottom, uh, but that, that can happen. Um, so the first thing I think we need to, to say is, what isn't causing the moisture to get in? Well, this, some people call it a breather hole, is not actually a hole, if you look very carefully. There's no hole there, it's just some sort of manufacturing mark, um, locating mark, maybe used at the factory, I don't know, but it certainly isn't a hole. So over on the back we see the parts label, at the top there is the part number, and you'll see it's uh, at the end it says B, which is revision B, several revisions of parts on these cars. Now I've seen a revision C that uh, has been okay, no, no leaking, but I've also seen revision Bs that have not leaked, so... Uh, at the moment, I don't know that we can tell an awful lot from this, but uh, maybe in time we, we will. So we'll move on to the connector. Um, it has a little bit of foam around it, and it uses a waterproof plug, as we've seen, so um, we don't think there's any water getting in there for the moment. Uh, then there's this little blue round patch, um, which is quite interesting and actually quite important. So let's look at this in a little bit more detail. Now these are called Gore Automotive Vents, and... They're actually designed to keep moisture out. Um, they're breathable, they're made by the same people that make Gore-Tex. Um, and so this is something that should be preventing condensation rather than introducing it. Um, I have seen recommendations from some people to take this off and plug the hole, but um, actually that's probably not the best thing to do. What we need to do is remove the moisture in the first place, and then when one of these patches is properly applied, it should stop moisture from getting in there in the future. Now it's probably worth mentioning at this point that those gore vents uh, were also used on Model 3s and S's and X's prior to March 2019. 
to prevent condensation on the B-pillar cameras. But uh, since that time, they've been removed from production and the cars should be relying now on the ventilation system, the cabin heating, to uh, clear any misting up that happens with those side cameras. So if you do see any fogging on B-pillar B cameras, um, best thing is just to turn your air conditioning on, turn the temperature up, and then direct the vents towards the side windows, and that should help. So let's now get back to our Model 3 tail light and, and look at how it's made at the factory. Um, it's made in two halves, there's the lens and then there's the back part and that needs to be welded together along this line. Um, and if you look at that weld in more detail, uh, it doesn't look completely even all the way along. So I did wonder if this has got something to do with moisture getting in. Um, and I took a look at what's used in the car industry to weld plastics. It's often a big machine like this and it could be done using ultrasonics or hot plates, infrared lamps, even lasers are used. Um, and the idea is that, that the unit should be sealed uh, when it leaves the factory and shouldn't let water in. But um, I think the only way that we can find out if it's the case with the Tesla parts is the water test. So what's the water test? Well, it's a similar idea to finding a puncture in a tire. Um, we connected a tube to the electrical connector on the back of the light unit and then we just put it in an inch of water so the, the weld, the plastic weld was covered with water all the way around um, and then we blew through the tube. You don't need to connect it up to an air cylinder, just um, blow and uh, you'll find that if there are any leaks the bubbles will emerge. And on this one you can see that just in the corner there there's uh, obviously a little leak so we'll mark that so we know where to patch it up later. Then when we took a look uh, and blew a little bit harder uh, we could see on the other side there were more bubbles coming out so there's obviously a few places here where water can get in and um, fog the unit up. Now when we took this one out of the water bath and had a little bit more uh, look at it we could see that there were cracks there not just places where the world hadn't taken um, so all the way along these cracks we can get water that's creeping in um, and that's probably accounts for why there was so much in there. We've got another light we took out where the world had not taken on one side and so there was air leaking all the way along. Uh, still can be repaired but it's not a good situation. But anyway, the next thing we've got to do is dry these units off completely inside and get rid of all the moisture. So the first stage is to remove that gore vent patch. Just get a knife under it and um, try and carefully do that without tearing it. We do want to try and reuse that after we've dried the light out and um, patched up all the little holes and cracks because it does serve a useful purpose. And if you do remove that carefully, you'll find the adhesive stays pretty sticky and it should stick down again. If not, you can use a little bit of super glue just around the edges uh, just to get it firmly stuck down. But once that's off, we can um, now go to the next step, which is drying out the unit completely. So we're going to put it back in our dish without water in this time and we're going to put it in a really low oven. OK, if your oven won't go down this low, probably best not to use this method. Other methods you could use, well, on a warm radiator perhaps, or in an airing cupboard, both of those overnight. Uh, but please, no microwaves. <coughs> no, that would be very bad, and I can't be responsible for any damage you might do to your lights, I'm afraid, so just be careful. If your oven doesn't go down low enough, then maybe put it down to the minimum, leave the door open. But once you see that the moisture is all gone and the light's nice and clear, uh, we can get back to the job of actually patching up those holes. So the first thing is to put the gore vent patch back in place. If it's not sticky enough, then use a little bit of glue around it just to make sure it sticks properly. So once that's back on, um, we can seal up all the little holes around the plastic world. And once that's done, this will effectively become a sealed light unit and moisture can get out of the patch, but nothing can get back in. So now we're going to go all the way around that plastic weld and seal it up. And we're not just going to concentrate on where we've seen the holes. We're going to do the whole thing because that should protect it in the future. And the product that I've chosen to use is called uh, liquid tape or electrical liquid tape. It's made by the same people that make Plasti Dip and it's a kind of rubber compound. It'll stick to the plastic, but it's also flexible. So it will allow the light unit to flex a little bit 
as it expands and contracts in the heat and the cold, uh, but it shouldn't crack and it shouldn't allow any more holes or any moisture to get in anywhere that's exposed to the elements. So I'm using this liquid tape all the way along the weld, uh, both sides of the weld, um, and this should mean that even if there was a, another crack occurring or there's a hole that we didn't spot, it's, it's going to be plugged up. And this takes only about an hour or so to dry. Once you've put one coat on, you can always put another coat on just to be sure. Um, and really, that's it. And once it's completely dry, you could put it back in the water and attach the tube again and just check to make sure that everything's sealed as it should be. Now it's time to put the unit back into the car. It's uh, pretty much the reverse procedure of what we did when we took it out. So first of all, just clip it in with the little retaining clips. Then take the nut and start it on the bolt and wind it all the way up by hand. It's easier than trying to get the socket on it initially. Then when you come to tighten that nut up completely, uh, don't go too tight on that. I think if it gets too tight, you might even introduce more stress fractures in the housing of the unit. Once that's hand tight, pop the connector back on, make sure the little bit of foam goes around the socket. That just helps to seal the connector against it. Then take the plug, push it all the way until you click, and then push that tab back in to lock it in place. Then you need to uh, retrieve these fasteners. There are white and blue fasteners that will be held in the boot lid itself. You need to prise those out with a tool. Try not to scratch the uh, paintwork uh, or drop the fasteners. When you've got those out, then they need to go back into the piece of plastic trim. Uh, they, they just slide in little slots at the back. And then when you've put those in place, you'll be able to push the trim back onto the lid. So don't be afraid at this point to give it a good smack with your hand and uh, it does take some effort to get those back and clipped in. Once that's clipped in, job done. We can shut the boot and uh, make sure the lights are working by giving them a good test. Now, if everything's working, everything's sealed, there's no reason to get that Ranger out and get a, a new light fitted. What they're going to do with the old unit is not repair it. They're going to throw it into a bin and it's going to get recycled. So that's wasted energy. Let's try and repair these if we can. There's nothing really wrong with them that can't be fixed without 10 minutes of your time and a bit of glue. So thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up and a subscribe if you've enjoyed it. Any comments or questions, please ask below. And if you've got any topics you want us to cover in the future, please ask us. We'll, we'll give it a go. We've got lots of ideas. Hopefully you'll come back again and see what we're doing on Tesla Gurus. Until then... Bye for now.